Antarctica, the White Continent, one of the most pristine places on Earth. This huge region of the Southern Hemisphere and its surrounding waters are essential components of our climate system. They absorb nearly three quarters of global excess heat and capture almost one third of CO2. But this amazing region is at risk. Climate change is having a visible and potentially irreversible impact on marine life and biodiversity. Scientists are raising the alarm. Over the last 30 years, Antarctica has warmed by 1.8 degrees Celsius. That's three times the global average. In 2019, the Belgica 121 expedition explored the marine biodiversity of the West Antarctic Peninsula. The goal was to establish a detailed understanding of living species in that area, an area particularly exposed to global warming. Bruno Danis, a marine biologist and professor at the Free University of Brussels, was the head of that mission, which collected more than 2,000 organic and mineral samples. Scientists are currently analysing them in order to create a specific database. Researchers and the main Antarctic scientists with decades of on-the-ground experience tell us that they really can see visible changes, particularly in the land environment. But it's also starting to be visible in the marine environment, because, for example, in the Antarctic Peninsula, we have a system that is bordered by glaciers with fjords, and the glaciers are melting. They are retreating in some respects from the system. Studying the impact of climate change on biodiversity in this region will enable researchers to predict the evolution of ecosystems. In turn, those studies will help the international community take important decisions on how to preserve the biodiversity of the Southern Ocean. We have an ecosystem that is exposed to rapid changes for which we have a significant lack of knowledge. On top of that, Antarctica is a difficult place to access, especially in terms of logistics. What we can do in order to reduce this lack of knowledge is use statistical models that we can use to create forecasts and fill in the gaps of our knowledge. As well as climate change, overfishing is another threat to this rich ecosystem. One of the most sought after natural treasures is krill, a small crustacean which is at the heart of the food chain in the Antarctic Ocean. To protect marine life and manage the region's fisheries, a commission for the conservation of Antarctic marine living resources, Camelot, was founded in 1982. Part of its mission is to put in place marine protected areas, MPAs for short. To date, only two protected areas have been designated, one in the Ross Sea and another in the Southern Orkney Islands Southern Shelf. Two new MPAs have been proposed by the EU and supported by its member states. A third MPA proposal has been presented by Argentina and Chile. If these three propositions are accepted, they would make up 1% of the world's oceans. The preservation of Antarctica is a bit like a global game of chess. The European Union is in favor of an ambitious plan to create the largest marine protected area in history. To achieve this, the European Commissioner for the Environment and Oceans, Virginia Sinkovicius, needs strong allies. The plan backed by Europe is also co-sponsored by the USA, Australia, New Zealand, Uruguay, Norway and the United Kingdom. China and Russia have opposed the proposals because of fishing in the region. Those protected areas will ensure that uh, nature uh, can basically rest and they are untouched by, by people. It doesn't need uh, additional activities, additional pressures uh, put. 
extraction of resources, fishing, or whatever pressures which can uh, even further drive uh, those processes. We probably need to do our job to convince uh, uh, Russia and also China and, and their colleagues that it is a matter of priority for them as well. And as I said, we are ready to engage. According to Geneviève Ponce, the director general of the think tank Europe Jacques Delors, China should seize the opportunity to play a leading role in the protection of climate and biodiversity in the Southern Ocean. We know that in September 2020 at the United Nations General Assembly, the Chinese President Xi Jinping committed to becoming carbon neutral by 2060. So it would be a great contradiction in his attitude, in his commitment, if he were to allow the destruction of what's probably the main existing carbon sink. The Russians were among the first to sign the Antarctic Treaty, which dates back to the 1st of December 1959. It was done in the midst of the Cold War. So it's a continent that's dedicated to peace and science. In the race to protect the Antarctic ecosystem, civil society can also play an important role. From Europe to America, several initiatives are underway to gain more support for the proposals on the agenda at the next Kamala meeting in October. Sea Legacy, an international organization that promotes ocean protection, is backing a soft power approach. Christina Mittermeier, co-founder of Sea Legacy, what kind of options and strategies do you see in order to unlock a negotiation on Antarctica? I think it's incumbent upon the rest of us to not attack Russia and China and instead invite them to do the right thing. What we need is public support, a massive group of individuals all around the planet that are willing to take action. And we have a technology platform called Only One, where we house these actions. So we have a petition and what we're asking is for Camelar to expedite, to accelerate the decision on protecting Antarctica. Marine protected areas are not a direct solution to climate change, but they could help create a resilience to help the ecosystem adapt to global warming. Many scientists and policymakers have called for at least 30% of the ocean to be protected by 2030, a target which could secure the long-term health of our planet.